Hey everyone, it's Kneecap here, and in this video I'll be showing you and guiding you on how to get the hive mind mount. First, some disclaimers. Thank you to the Secret Finding Discord. While I can do the puzzles myself, it's insane the time and energy you guys put into finding these clues, so guys like me and many others can do these secrets. Uh, more disclaimers, you will eventually need a five-man group for the back half of the secret, so have some friends or guildies join the Secret Finding Discord or just search for hive mind in the custom section of the Looking for Group tool. Uh, there's no prerequisites for this, um, such as Baal or the Waste of Time, anyone can do this secret. I'll be showing you how to get all four monocles, which are needed later on. Out of your group of five, you only need one of each color. One person could be the runner and not have any monocles. The order of the monocles I'll be showing is red, yellow, green, and blue. And the first step of your journey you're going to obtain uh, for obtaining monocles is to go to Grifta in Chathra City, uh, Burning Crusade. He's located in the southeast end at 6668 for coordinates. You have to buy the talisman of true treasure tracking from him. Uh, putting it on, items on the table behind him will start to glow. These items glowing are helpful guess where to find the next clues. Uh, red fish, red monocle, and Vashir, for example, fish being Vashir. Click on the blue letter and read it behind Grifta. It's very important, and you need to wear this necklace for the rest of the secret, so equip the necklace and keep it on. First, let's head to Vashir for the red monocle. You can get there via portal in your faction's main city. If you don't have a portal, you may have to do an introductory quest to open it, which can be picked up by either near the portal or from a faction leader or from a mission board or something like that. To do this, you'll either uh, need the Vashir Seahorse that you get from the quest line or some sort of underwater breathing, swim speed, increases, etc. Anything that'll help you deal with vast amount of open water. I suggest using an add-on such as TomTob for waypoints or at the very least some sort of map coordinates. This is timed and one of the harder monocles to get. This will also cost you uh, 2,380 gold for the items needed. This will take you around a half hour with no breaks, again timed. I advise you to use swim speeds for diving and swimming back up and using flying mount to get to the next location. First let's go to Sir Finley and Vashir. He's actually on land in a sentry tower at 4420 in Shimmering Expanse. He will be at the starting point for all three or four items and the ending point for the monocle. Once here and ready to commit, purchase 500 seashells for Finley for one gold each. I couldn't buy 500 at a time, so buy them in the increments that you need to. Next, we're going to head to Abyssal Depths at 3877 uh, to the Mob Volatile Violet Scale. You'll exchange the shells for 100 cavity-free teeth. Um, all of the in-between steps have a five minute timer, so these teeth will last for five minutes. So you need to get step to step as fast as you can, and you can't really afford to take breaks. Um, the other thing I will say is, so you're purchasing, so you, get, you started with 500 seashells, you're basically gonna use all 500 seashells. So it's for 100 cavity free teeth, so you would assume that it's, uh, uh, they cost five seashells each basically. So you just use all your seashells for all the teeth and then just use everything going forward uh, at all times. So there's the volatile violet scale. I'll show you them good, all of them uh, really good at least one time. Uh, next we're gonna head uh, to the Shimmering Expanse at 5322 to the mob Mantra Stargazer and trade for Razor Eel Larva, uh, 50 of them. This one's right at the top, so it's really easy to get to, right at the top of the the ocean there. So we'll, we'll purchase our razor eel larva. Onward to the Shimmering Expanse at 6947 to Little Whaley and 250 well-fed Dr. Fish. I had trouble finding this one. It, all the coordinates say 6947, so I assume it's a problem on my end, but he's not really right there. He's actually southeast a little bit. Um, so you, you might have to look a little bit southeast if you go there. If you come from the top, it's really easy to spot him, though. I actually went there on my seahorse. So you see him load in right there, and you'll be able to uh, purchase your 250 well-fed doctor fish. Now we're going to go back to Abyssal Depths at 6542 to the gloomy bluefin, and we're going to buy 10 freshly molted crab skin from him. So, um, again, I'm going to show you these good at least one time. You have to swim pretty far down for this one. Just wanted to make sure everyone gets to them because it's timed especially. One thing you can do, I'll say right now, is um, if, you, if you just, I'll have all these coordinates in the thing. If you want to just mark them on your map with an add-on or a map or look at, there, there are maps. Maybe I can add a, a picture of a map to the, video as well. Uh, the glitter go will be last um, 
And that's Kelpthar Forest at 6059. It's old fish breath, and you'll get 50 glitter gill from him. The glitter gill will last for 30 minutes, and that's how long you have to get the next item. Again, this is all timed. So we're going to go back to Sir Finley in the Shermanary Expanse, 4420. And this time we're going to start with 80 seashells. So 80 gold. So there he is. We'll be in the Abyssal Depths for the next three. Uh, we're going to go back to Gloomy Bluefin at 6542. Again, Abyssal Depths. And we're going to get two giant, giant toenails. If any of these numbers aren't exactly correct, again, just buy the maximum amount that you can. Next, we're going to go to 4517 to the Little Carp, or uh, who kind of looks like a Magic Carp. And we're going to get five, four Makura Eyes. Uh, last in Abyssal Depths, we're going to go to 3877 to the Violetella Violet Scale and get one Accidentally Severed Seahorse. Now we're going to go to Shimmer Expanse to 5388 uh, to the Crimson Anglerfish. Uh, we're going to get Shiny Sea Serpent Scale times two. And this is a very annoying one. I, I advise dismounting or, you know, not using swim speed near it. You just kind of have to swim or alongside it when you buy it. Uh, for the first, for this, I actually was able to place myself in front of him and buy it. But uh, later on, you have to buy more things. So you might actually have to type in the number that you want to buy and stuff. So um, definitely get used to that. <laughs> Don't let yourself lose your timer just because you can't interact with this thing correctly. Uh, still in the expanse, we're going to go to 5322, back to Mana Stargazer, uh, for our 40 symbiotic plankton. Again, this is the guy that's near the top here and pretty close to Sir Finny. We're going to go back to Sir Finny at 4420 and purchase your 5 Murloc Skin Lotion. This item will last one hour, and those 5 Murloc Skin Lotion go towards the monocle that you're going to be buying. You do this one first. Uh, uh, that being said, because it lasts one hour. Uh, for the gloop, uh, which is item two of three, we're already at Finley. So go ahead and buy 300 seashells from Finley. Again, uh, you might have to do it in increments. I don't know if it'll let you buy 300 or not. Uh, first, we're going to go to Kelpthar Forest at 6059 to Old Fish Breath and get three Vantus Black Ink. Thirty Vantus Black Ink. Uh, now we're going to go Abyssal Depths. This is this one is very long. Like it's a lot of travel. I advise going topside and using Flying Mount if you were not doing that already for all of them. And at fifteen eighty two, the Blackfish uh, will be, and you'll get thirty Super Slick Eel Slime from him. If you go straight down, you can't miss this guy because he's the only fish in the area, and he's not even. Uh, he kind of looks like a whale. I don't know. Now to 3877, back to the Volatile Violet Scale. Um, we're going to get three Rock Encrusted Welk Shells. This is kind of, uh, we go to the same things over and over again, so you should kind of get the hang of where they are. Uh, next we're going to 4517, back to Little Carp, for the five Gastropod Gloop. And this item will last a half hour. So you should still have plenty of time on your hour item, and then you have a half hour uh, to complete the next one. For the last item, of course, go back to Finley for your shells. Shimmering Expanse, 4420. And this time we're going to buy 1,500 shells, so that's 1,500 gold. Again, I just bought these in increments. Stay in Shimmering. Go to 6947 to Little Whaley. As you see coming from the top, you can see them a little bit easier. And uh, we're going to get 300 very pretty coral. Uh, go to Kelpthar Forest at 6059 to Old Fish Breath again. And we're going to get Iridescent Shimmery Skin, 100 of them. Back to the Shimmering Expanse, 5388, to that Crimson Angler again, the annoying one, and get 20 Lux Scale Scales. Uh, 
<laughs> this one's very annoying. Um, the long run, one more time to the Abyssal Depths at 1582. We're going to go to Blackfish and get five captured bubbles. There's the captured bubbles. Uh, assuming you now have five of each, uh, the final item with no timers ran out, you can uh, now go back to Sir Finley Shimmering Expanse 4420 and purchase the red monocle for five of each. Congrats on your first uh, monocle. Uh, remember, we're keeping the necklace on for this entire secret. It's the last time I'll warn for that. For the next monocle, we'll do yellow. This is the hardest one, most people say. So you can either skip it or be very valuable to your group later on because you have this one. Uh, we'll head to Oldham through the portal, much like Vashir. From there, we head to the Halls of Origination, the incense which I honestly forgot existed. This is an Oldham, it's at the Giant Pyramid. I'll show you it on the map later on. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get there just because, heck, as much as I play this game and I forgot where it was and I forgot about it, I guess anybody could forget about it. I spent a lot of time in Oldham too. I am, uh, I am a camel hoarder. So, if you know what that means. Okay, so you're just flying over to the pyramid, and the the entrance is on this end of it. Again, I have no idea where the entrance is. You can, I kind of saw it there, but didn't catch it. There it is. There's the. I checked the stone to make sure it said Halls of Origination. And you just go down here and you'll very easily see the portal. And once you see the portal, I will go ahead and go inside and start talking about this next puzzle. So, uh, we do have to kill the first boss, uh, no matter what. And other than that, you can I think you can kind of you can skip the rest of it if you want to. So, what I advise doing though is going and doing the Hall of Lights, which is after you kill the first boss and get to the elevator, you would go left and talk to Bron. You would kill the elementals, and um, you would then uh, be able to go back to the elevator and send it up. Now, you don't have to do that, but that's what I advise doing. So, uh, I don't think you have to kill the boss to the right to do that. I did kill the boss to the right, so I don't know for sure, but uh, uh, that's, that's definitely what I advise doing. So, here's the elevator. Um, when you have the necklace on, which you should, you'll be able to click right around where my character is right now and activate uh, the, the stuff below you. So uh, do I activate that first or go to the elevator? Okay, so here I am, about right where my character is. And see, uh, everything starts turning on below me right there. It's hard to see with the elevator down. So here's the elevator pad. Right now you can't move it at all, it's stuck there. It's on, stuck on floor one because you haven't completed the instance yet. Now, if you don't want to worry about moving the elevator, you just want to get down there and do it, you can just go ahead and head north from here. When you head north, just keep a lookout. There'll be an opening in the wall. The opening in the wall will then send you down a flight of stairs down to the puzzle, and you can just do it with the elevator there. The opening in the wall looks a lot like how you get to Old Iron Forge, if you know that. Uh, if you're Alliance or maybe you're a Horde that have been there before, killing uh, the dwarf leaders or whatever. So here's... Here's just showing you this Vault of Lights thing real quick. You come in there, you talk to Brown, you come in here, and there'll be elementals on four different platforms. You kill the four elementals, boss will come out of the door, kill the boss, and then uh, you should be able to activate the elevator after you do that. So just put that in. Okay, so I, I come over here, the elevator actually starts taking me up, and then I hop down and do the puzzle this way. So. Honestly, this is this is going to be a lot of just me. Uh, th there's no set way to do this. is the is the best way to put it. Uh, what you need to know of these these purple crystals on the floor. There's three different types that do three different things. There's uh, what I call the pulse type. They basically have uh, four uh, a diamond of of lines around them. Those change the colors of everything directly touching them or directly around them. So they don't they don't have like a huge area. They just do a little pulse around them. That's why I call it a pulse one. Then you have an X or a multiplication sign, then you have a plus or a cross. And those will shoot straight out in any direction until they hit another crystal. That'll stop the, the color changing from happening. So go ahead and play with these because it doesn't matter if you mess around with them. There might be some secret way to do it where you just hit this one, that one, this one, that one, and solve it. I don't At the time of this video, there isn't. And uh, I don't know if anyone's going to put the time in to figure that out or not. 
There's also an add-on you can use to do this that someone made, but you have to plug in each individual thing because it's random. So you have to plug in where each color everything is, and then it'll tell you which ones to click from there. So somebody did go that far to, to figure that out. So that's helpful at least. It must run some kind of algorithm or something to figure that out. But go ahead and play with the crystals and figure out how they all work, see how it shoots the beams out and everything like that. Because you definitely need to understand how they work and just understand the magnitude of how far they can go across. And then understand that some of them are blocked for a reason. Uh, it's all important to understand. So I'll go ahead and tell you my strategy for this. I didn't use an add-on or anything. I just decided that I was going to start on the outer ring and work my way inside. So I just chose a color. I chose red just randomly. And I literally went one by one. And uh, I think I went, it doesn't matter. You either choose clockwise or counterclockwise and stick with it. And I chose uh, whatever way I chose. And then uh, I, just, I just went around in a circle and brute force did it. So the big thing you have to realize when you're doing it this way is that you'll get to a point. So let's say you get 10 in a row real easy. Then on the 11th one, you have to change like four of them behind you to a different color to get that one to change. That could be normal. There might be only one purple, uh, one purple crystal that can affect that, that particular one. So I need to change it to red. There might be only one of them that can even touch it. So I, obviously I have to use that one, even if it affects my other, my other ones. So that means that you need to go back to your other ones and find a different way to change them back. A lot of times when there's just one that you need to change, I noticed it's either something that's super far away, like that's on a diagonal super far away, or it's one that's kind of far away in a straight line like from the center. Um, that, that would be my tip if you, if you decide to do it my way, is to, to check for those. And don't be afraid to go back and, and fix the stuff that you have to mess up. So I work clockwise, Whatever I mess up behind me, or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. And then whatever I mess up behind me, I go back and fix. And then I continue on with my path. And I literally just did one circle, two circles, three circles. By the time you get to like the fourth and fifth circle, the board's just gonna be filling itself up. It's gonna be really easy by then to where you barely have to put any work in. But I, I think by the time I had the fifth circle, I just had to go click a few things and it was done. Because this is a puzzle, it's meant to be solved. It's kind of like a Rubik's Cube. The hardest part of a Rubik's Cube is uh, for a lot of people is just getting the first side done and then you know go from there it kind of solves itself as you do it and it's like oh look this these like I just did right on the video there there's two lines that are wrong and this thing shoots out in that direction it becomes very obvious after a while what to do while it's not super obvious at the beginning what to do there's a lot of times I know the second I think the second uh, row is the hardest for me there's a lot of going back and changing things um, like I like I get like 20 in a row and then I have to do something where eight of them get changed and I have to go fix those eight um, and that's just that's just the way it is some of the parts are easier than the others uh, because they have multiple ways to change the colors other of them only have like one way to change the color uh, the other thing I would advise against that I kind of did was uh, I would go and just and you can kind of see it from my video here that I have uh, just randomly red everywhere solved even not in my circle because I would just get so um, almost depressed because I, I spent way too much time doing this frankly and uh, I'd get so depressed that I would just start doing random stuff other places like I wouldn't affect my outside my outside lines but I would just go on the inside and just start doing random stuff and turning it red which might have saved me a little bit of time by the end of it but um, really a lot of it's gonna get changed this is just showing an example um, I think I'm on my it looks like I'm, I'm only on my second line but I had to go back and change a lot of stuff on my first line and that's just the, the nature of it because you have to just it's just plugging away it's just this is just a brute force way of doing it it's not like a highly intellectual way or anything like that you're just you know doing it in order uh with through with, with uh, true brute force and just powering through it and just finding out you know exactly where you need to put the stuff so hopefully soon it'll, it'll jump ahead to a more completed version but yeah, um, if you have any questions, I, I can try to help you the best I can. Heck, if you, if you want to give me some gold or something, I can I can go solve it again, and you can use it, and I'll solve it for you even. Um, that could be a good way to make some gold. Uh, I'm probably not going to do it just for fun, but um, maybe, I mean, maybe I would do it uh, for a group of people, though. Like, maybe if, uh, if you have, like, 
a group of friends that need it done, maybe I could go do it for you or something like that. But I'm probably not gonna, I don't wanna do it like a bunch of times though. So if you're really stuck on it, I, there is a potential I would help you maybe, maybe instead of charging gold, maybe ask for a tip or something like that, I don't know. But as you see, like it kind of just, kind of just fills itself out at some point as, as you go inward. And it's just like, oh, look, this is real easy. And as long as you keep going in the same clockwise or counterclockwise way, you can you can just easily hit the correct crystals and it just it what what was once hard on the outer ring becomes much much easier look at all that red it looks beautiful this is a good example of just clicking the crystals in the correct well clockwise or counterclockwise order and then it fixing itself so i had to change that to green but then the very next one i can change it Back to red. So here's the final one. So I was, I was really excited at this point, actually. <laughs> I was very relieved. And all of it will disappear when you finish it. Now, I didn't actually have my necklace on. Uh, you can do it without the necklace on. You just can't see your reward without the necklace. So uh, you can actually do the puzzle without the necklace on. So I didn't follow my own rule keeping the necklace on. But that's where the chest spawns with the necklace on. And then you can go loot your yellow monocle. So congratulations, you now have the yellow monocle, which a lot of people probably won't have um, because it's not very fun to do this puzzle uh, unless you have a lot of time and then it could be really fun just to kind of mess around and do the puzzle. Uh, next, we're going to go to Spires of Iraq, Skyreach. There is where it is on the map, the entrance, and we're going to go to that dungeon. Uh, some people were saying you had to do on Heroic. I don't necessarily know if that's true or not, uh, but... Uh, turn on heroic if you if you care to uh, worry about that just in case because some people said that you know hey I did it in heroic again I did this I was basically trying to do this as other people were doing it like just figuring it out so uh, this is fairly early in the secret game I guess you would say so we have to complete this whole um, instance because it's behind the final boss uh, after this boss, uh, this is like the second boss, I think, or it might be third, I'm not sure. But after this boss, I just want to show this part just in case you hadn't run it before. Uh, movement speed is your friend here. Heroic leap, wild charge, things that can make you jump. Um, the demon hunters obviously are really good for this. But speed helps you. You're just running against the wind. If you if you turn it any way, um, it's not running directly against the wind. It could just blow you right off the edge. So if you don't have like a jump or something to just jump to the stairs from there, you need to kind of go around in a circle like a horseshoe and go around. I didn't have my movement speed up. It's up soon. And then you, you can kind of do it a lot easier with movement speed and just kind of go for it. The more movement speed, the more you can push against it. So this is just killing the last boss. I don't even know if you have to kill the last boss. So if you want to solve this on your own, you can do it. And these are the instructions. So the instructions are on the left. You can use that to figure out the instructions. I, I promise you the answer is in there if you want. So if you don't want a spoiler on how to do this one, then you're going to want to skip the next part because I'm just going to straight up tell you how to do it. I did not figure this out myself. It was already figured out before I got here. And I just, you know, use the answer provided to me uh, for uh, convenience sake. So uh, the, org the uh, object to the right of that is the other thing. So you press the little circle in the middle to start it. And then uh, here's, here's the answer key. Okay. So you hit the right yellow thing, then up, down, up, right, right, up, left, down, up, left, down. And that should be what you see on the screen as well of me doing. And um, that will just activate the puzzle. I do it a little bit slower because I was trying to make sure I did it right. But um, yeah, somebody figured this out. Um, I'm not exactly even sure what you're supposed to be doing, frankly, because it was figured out before I even got to really look into it at all. I spent so much time on the, if I would have finished up the yellow one faster, I might have had a chance to participate in this a little bit more. But uh, when you finish it, the chest will pop up there, again, providing you have the necklace on. And uh, you can go ahead and open up your green monocle. If I ever decide to click on it, apparently. There we go. So now you have three monocles. Now you're even more valuable of a player to join a group. And uh, lastly, we'll do the blue monocle. This one's another scavenger hunt like the red, only more travel based and not time or gold based. Uh, first, hopefully you listened to me and you read the letter behind Grifta in, in chat uh, when I told you to. 
Next, we're going to head to High Mountain and Prep Foot. You can take the flight path or fly there yourself. Uh, 5727 is the coordinates. It's in a tent on a crate. Make sure you click and read the letter, all of them. Here it is on the map. And they're just clicking on the letter. Just make sure you always do that. Uh, onward to Old Kara. You have to clear all the way to the last boss. It's in the room that juts off the staircase to the final boss. It, it's his bedroom, basically. You can find the letter on his chair near his desk. I wanted to show you a little bit of chess, just in case people got stuck here. I know I saw some people in the Discord getting stuck on the chess event. So I'm just going to tell you how I do it. Uh, you enter your faction's king to start the chess event. And from there, um, my exit button wasn't actually working. But you can right-click off the buff on you, and that'll take you out of it as well, which is what I ended up having to do. So uh, when you click it off, it'll put you back like at the start. And then what I do is I move all my pawns out as fast as I can. So uh, I get my king and queen free first, because obviously uh, if you've never done it before, Medivh cheats and puts fire underneath your players or whatever, underneath your uh, little pieces. So I move out the pawns in front of uh, my king and queen first, and then I move out the pawns in front of my healers. And then if I have more time, uh, you know, before he cheats or before there's a bunch of battling going on, then I move out all my pawns. Or if they're not already in a fight, like this pawn of, you know, over here is already fighting, so I won't bother moving that one. So I just move out all my pawns, and that'll create room. When he cheats, you want to move in order your king, your queen, and your healers, because obviously your king has to be alive. Your queen is just really powerful for damage, um, and at least one of your healers is is usually going to be alive. So, But you, you definitely want to save at least one of your healers, if not both, just because uh, they can basically heal up your your king or whoever to full health uh and it just it's it makes it very easy frankly so i'm just pulling out everything and then from there you can get in your king or your queen or whoever and just start doing damage so here's the finish of it uh all done again if you have any super questions i, I will help you on that uh if you ask below so we're gonna go to the right here there's the staircase I'll head up it and then there's gonna be a little room right here okay Medivh's chambers if you're curious at how we're getting the clues for this the 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 words in the letters some of them are some of the words are capitalized those words are then used for an anagram to find the next clue so this was like guardian seat or something like that so the letter was on his seat there hopefully you saw uh, and you click on that uh, so now we're going to go to Razorfen Downs, which is in Southern Barren slash Northern Thousand Needles. It's hard to get to you if you haven't been there before, so try to find your way inside. Um, and again, at this one, we'll get to the end of the instance, and it'll be a crate behind the last boss. But I'm going to kind of show you how to get there the best I can. I'm not great at it myself. I'm As an Alliance player, I think I only ever like really ran this instance. I've ran it a couple times to farm greens, but I think I've only ever really ran it like twice in vanilla. So it's not like I am the best at finding it myself. But you're looking for the big uh, cool boar snout, basically. So here it is on the map. It, if you see on the map, it's to the left of that northern thorn, and it's right along the path there. So it's actually pretty easy to find just, just via the map alone. Pretty easy to find. You're going to head down the, uh, the throat there. And then when you get to the bottom, which eventually we will, we're actually going to take a right underneath the root there. And there's the portal kind of hidden a little bit. If you need help with this, again, you can ask. I just assumed everyone would be able to run a low level instance, but maybe not. Here's the letter. It's behind the last boss. Just scroll through the entire instance to the to the last boss. I didn't even fight the last boss. I just uh, went to the letter. Uh, now we're going to go to Mount Hyjal and the Shrine of Aviana. You can get there through the portal, much like Vashir and Oldham. Uh, in Hyjal, it's at 4447. You need to go to the highest floor of the tree fort, and you'll find a letter on the table in there. So I'm going to show you how, well, I'm going to show you where it's at. So here's the front of it, if, if you can't figure out from what I said. So if you go to the front, then right up here is the, hot, the tallest uh, area where you can go inside. And I think I actually go outside to show you on the map, just to be clear, but that was the table with the letter. So here it is on the map, just in case you don't have coordinates or whatever. 
although I feel sorry for you doing this without it. And then there's the letter. Next we're going to go to Ironwall Dam between Crystal Song Forest and Ice Crown. And we're going to be in Northrand technically, uh, or in Ice Crown technically, and it's at 7173 for the coordinates. And this letter will be on like a sharp point sticking out of the dam. It's actually kind of hard to find, especially at nighttime, which is when I was doing it. It's really dark. Uh, luckily, there was actually a player really near it, so it kind of made me think to look over there. But I really, I just scroll over it and can see it, but I had to really zoom in to really totally see it right there. So there it is on the map. There's the dam. And then there's the letter. Uh, next, we're going to go to Pandaria, specifically to Town Long Steps at 3863. It'll be near a bell structure there that you might also be able to click on if you haven't already for like one of those achievement things of finding all the different scrolls or whatever it is. So I actually click on that first. <laughs> Got some sort of achievement tracker there. And then uh, the letters on the near one of the posts there. Again, this one was a little bit hard to see at night. Okay, so there it is on the map. Go ahead and click on that. And then, uh, lastly, we're going to receive the gift. Uh, it's in Caldera, Borean Tundra, Northrend. Uh, coordinates Borean Tundra 2827. And it's at the very top ring on the inside edge of one of the circles. So I came from the south uh, because I actually came from the boat. So it was to the one to the left, um, the circle to my left. If you come from the east, it would be kind of to your left as well. And there you go. Again, you would need the glass, the necklace on to see that. And that will give you all the monocles. So now you have, if you did all of those, you have all the monocles. And now you can do anything at the ceremony part. So I wanted to show you this part because I was not the person who went into the room. This is Suramar at 4170. One of your group of five, so you need a group of five, like I said at the start, and one person's gonna be standing right here waiting for those beams to move so they can walk inside. Those beams have different colors, just like the monocles that we have, and those are gonna be deactivated. So uh, we have Fort Withered added in Suramar in the patch 8.1, uh, Rakei the red monocle at 7263, uh, Blomon, the blue monocle, at 47.29. Giluzi, the green monocle, at 20.46. And Yorlin, Yorlin, the yellow monocle, at 43.82. So one person, uh, each need to go there. Uh, you'll need a person with that color monocle at each location at the same time. And you actually have to equip it to make them hostile. Uh, and one person at the beams at 41.70. You have to kill them down at the same time. And when they draw energy, the person in the room should be able to get through the beams. When you're in the room, you need to click on the cat toy. This cat toy is going to do damage to you. Check the combat log tab and see how much arcane damage it did to you. This is the next clue. And it is random and different for each group. The group members all share that same clue, so only one person has to do it in the group. I was doing yellow in this video, so I'm at the yellow guy. Um, also, you can do it at the same time as other groups, just to make sure you tag it uh, with a white hit. You also must all be uh, all in war mode or out of war mode can't be mixed. We weren't in a voice chat, so ended up just constantly killing the mobs until they lined up where the guy could walk in. And the only confirmation you get is your beam guy telling you he got through. Next, we're going to head to Quarter Star, still in groups. When inside, we'll meet, uh, need to head to Lady Shatan at 5069. I'll show you how to get to her, of course. Uh, remember, I said to take down the arcane damage from the cat toy. Here's where and how we use it. Uh, it'll usually be a five digit number. Each digit equals a number of pets for one of the five cats. If it's four digits, you skip one cat, which is Fluffy Muffins. If it's a three digit, you skip the first two cats, Fluffy Muffins and Shadow. And I'll, I'll once we get to Lady Shatan, I'll, I'll get more into that. So I'm going to speed this up just to kind of show you where she's at. We kill everything really fast. Again, we're still in our group of five. Down the stairs. Take a right. You can get there any way you like, technically. Just make sure you get to the building. 
just to the right over here. Okay. The cat order is Mrs. Fluffy Muffins, Shadow, Mew, Ash, and Bella, as far as the digits of the arcane damage. Assign one of your players to each of them. This can be their roll going forward, 1 through 5. If your arcane damage was 1, or 12,345, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you would do 1 stack of pet on Fluffy, 2 on Shadow, 3 on Mew, 4 on Ash, and 5 on Bella. They all need to have the stacks at the same time. If you do it, they will all move at the same time and summon an orb that you can click on one at a time uh, to get the hidden area. So, um, I was number five. I, I had Bella, and so I had to do the digit that can correspond uh, corresponded to the fifth digit, which was, happened to be five in my group. But the first one was nine, so Fluffy in our group got pet nine times. Uh, whereas Bella got pet five times. I did a countdown to kind of help people because start at the same time. As long as you start at the same time, it's it'll probably work no matter what. Nine and one can be a little bit hard, but we had a nine and a two and it wasn't an, any issue at all. So I'm going to pet five times. People were saying when they were done in chat as well. So, okay, so I'm done. I'm waiting for the last person to get done. Probably the person that had the nine. And then you see them do a spin here. Okay. It's important to note for this next puzzle, there's more than one way to do it. I'm giving you a known solution that does work. You're trying to get your entire group to the next platform, not just one or two of you. You could do this two at a time if possible, and then three at a time if possible. You could do it three at a time and have one person jump off and reset, and then repeat the order for the same group of, for the second group of three. I'm showing you a way to do it with all five. You can do it any way you want. If there's a better solution, by the time I put out all this video, use that. Um, but this is this is a solution. Uh, remember your numbers from the cats. I was number five and I remained number five for this. If you didn't assign numbers at the cats, assign yourself numbers now, one through five. So, person one, you're going to start on the first platform and then you're going to move forward one more. Person two, forward, forward onto the first platform, left, forward. Person one, forward. Person three, forward, forward, right, right. And then the video kind of will tail off from me talking from this point because I'm not going to be able to see everything from my position. Uh, person four, forward, left. Person five, forward. Person two, left. Person four, forward. Person two, left. Person four, left, forward. Person two, forward, left. Person three, backwards. Person five, forward, right, right, right person three forward person five forward person one right forward person three back forward right person one forward left person four forward person two back forward person five forward person two back forward person five right person three forward Person one, forward, right. Person two, forward, right. Person four, forward. Person two, left, forward. Person four, forward. Person one, right, forward. Person three, left. Person four, forward. Person three, forward, forward. Person five, forward. Person one, left. Person four, right. Person five, left. Person two, forward. Person four, forward. Person five, forward, forward. Person one, forward. Person three, left. Person five, right, forward. Person four, forward. Person one, right. Person five, left. Person one, forward. Person two, forward. Person three, reset, leave vehicle, jump down. Person three, go to the far left platform from the start. You're back at the start, person three. And then person three, forward. Person two, forward. Person three, forward, forward, forward. Person two, back. Person four, right. Person five, forward. Person two, forward, right, forward. Person three, forward, 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 forward. At that point, you should all be at the, uh, above the last platform and you should be able to just uh, exit vehicle and all be done. At that point, uh, 
which I'll, I guess I'll wait for the video to catch up there. But there, well, I think we're just about done. That you see the forward, forward, forward happening <laughs> for the last person. And I, I'll actually, I'll have this down in the description. I know just hearing a voice, I mean, you're never going to remember it or anything. It's going to be hard to follow along. So when you all get off the platforms, you all walk up to the door and the door will become interactable. And now you can interact with the door. I'll do my, net, uh, my best to explain how this next part works in the simplest way possible. As of now, it's believed to be random, but one person in your group can travel on the disc with any other person and make it across. They are what I would call the ferry driver. They will be on the disc at all times. So you have to figure out who that is through trial and error. You can do this quicker by sending trios. The max you can put on the disc is three. So send person one, two, and three all together. If they make it to the other side on the first try, great. You found the trio already. Now you just need to figure out who the ferry driver is. So send one with two. If it makes it, send one with three. If that makes it, you know that person one is the ferry driver. This scenario is if it worked out perfectly, a trial with no error. It could be that you have to send person two, three, and five as the trio, and that person three ends up being the ferry driver. Unfortunately, it's hard to tell if there's any way to identify who the person is at the time of this video. So once you figure out the ferry driver, the person who can cross with anyone, they can hop on the disc um, with their, pretty much immediately. They're going to stay on the disc. They'll stay there until the end. Have your group of three cross over first. Leave one of them there at the finish, just not the ferry driver. As you go back to the starting line, you'll have the other group of three person jump off and pick up one of the remaining two. The remaining two I call the worthless because they're just along for the ride. I happen to be one of them. Now ferry driver is with one of the worthless. You'll drop off the worthless at the finish line and pick up a group of three that was at the finish and travel back. The worthless guy is now finished there. Now back to the starting line, reunite your group of three all on the disc, no drop offs. All three head to finish, leaving one worthless at the start. Drop off one group of three at the finish, back at the start, swap group of three for, sec for the second worthless. Drop off the worthless at the finish and group of three member jump back on. Now both worthless are finished. When you get back to the start, pick up the group of three member and you should all be on the disc for your final trip back. At this point, all of you should be at the finish line, able to approach and open the door. I will provide um, a picture or another description of this if my vocal version wasn't good enough, but uh, I thought I did a pretty good job on that, all things considered. So when you all um, approach the door here, you will uh, be near the hive mind, and that's the big thing. And each person can uh, go to a different arcane pad there. And uh, you just you can then click on the hive mind, and it'll do like a little summoning type thing and it'll start heading down. And as it goes down, um, I had my thing in party chat, but it'll say that you received uh, the mount. <laughs> and then uh, you can then also, I actually got on one of my mount achievements for this. It was my 200th mount or my 300th mount, or I think a 200 mount parade, whatever one that one was. So then you can learn the mount and there you go you have the mount and congratulations it's a really cool looking mount and yeah if you have any questions i'm going to have all the specific information in the details of the uh description of the video but other than that uh yeah uh if you have any questions i'll try to help the best that i can i try to be really thorough though so uh good luck to everyone i'll even provide um a, a written guide that on wowhead if someone wants to use that instead just because i want more people to get it because it's a really cool mount um, other than that, please subscribe if I helped you out at all, and everybody have a good one.